Planting the Seeds of Steam with Arian Sutu, Senior Editor, National Geographic Kids Books. Welcome back to the Cosmic Companion. I'm James Maynard. Buckle up, because this week we're going to take a wild ride through the exciting and innovative universe of STEAM education. Now, STEAM encompasses five main views, and it looks at the universe. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. If only there were some perfect analogy for it. Wait. Ah. Ah. Look at that. There's so 515 from the 19th century now. Trains just keep getting slower and slower around this place. Now, uh, the first steam train ran in 1802. It, this invention was, in part, the result of pure science studying the properties of pressurized steam and vacuums discovered during experiments in the 17th century. The technology of steam engines, which came about in the early 18th century, also certainly played a major role in the development of steam trains. I mean, a train without an engine is just an oversized paperweight, isn't it? Engineering was responsible for suitable trains and boilers, as well as addressing challenges such as track alignment, ballast selection, Trap gauge standardization and the implementation of curves, switches, and turnouts to allow for flexible routing. A train without tracks is, at best, a lunch cart. Some of these steam trains also went down in history for the beautiful and intricate art on their sides, as well as the ability to travel at breakneck speeds of dozens of miles an hour. These included the Flying Scotsman, which first rolled in 1923, and the Orient Express. It was murder. Mr. Ratchet was looking for Mr. Wrench, who bolted when things got nuts, and a hammer came down, and everyone got nailed, and... The age of steam in the 19th and early 20th centuries produced a pinnacle of art and technology during the first generation of train travel. From knowing how much acceleration a train is going to gain, go gain going downhill to figuring out how much paint to order for a caboose, everything depends on math. The invention of the steam train is the result of the development of Steam. Steam, steam, it's the power that we need. Steam, steam, it's the knowledge that we feed. Steam, steam. Next up, we welcome Ariane C. Chu, Senior Editor, National Geographic Kids Books, uh, talking about steam education and Nat Geo Kids' new work, Almanac 2024. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. This week on The Cosmic Companion, we are delighted to be joined by Ariane Su Chu. She is Senior Editor at Na National Geographic Kids Books, and she's here to talk to us about their new work, Almanac 2024, magically appearing here. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Ariane. Hi, thank you so much for having me. 
Oh, very, very welcome. Um, can you tell us, first of all, uh, just a little bit about the Almanac and it's in the series that it's part of and what is it, what is it that makes it so special? Sure. So it's a yearly um, almanac that we put out. This is what it looks like. And it is a compendium of really, really cool information about our world world and beyond, actually, because we talk about space as well. Um, what makes it so special is, oh my goodness, so many things. Well, so one, it's got an incredible array of information in it. We've got animal rescue stories. We've got, you know, stats about, about sharks about you know this is plastic and plastic use um it really is just this total boredom busting compendium that's perfect for kids if you know if they're going to summer camp this summer and you want to give them something to you know to take with them or if you're going on a long like road trip for example or if you're going on a plane ride and you want to kind of entertain them in the airport or on the plane for a while there are riddles there are jokes there are population stats in here country flags um, information about different cultures. It's incredibly cool. There's like a, such a wide array of information. There's really something for everyone in here. Fabulous. And it, it is just amazing how diverse things are. You have presidential facts in there and oceanography and animals. And, and um, so how did you go about collecting all these facts and choosing what to use and what not to use? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, well, I mean, what, oh my goodness. So it's a team effort, first of all. Um, we work, work with a whole team of fact checkers and you know our photo editor and our designer, and we really assemble information that we find fascinating and that we know scores really highly with kids. So. Um, we, we used to actually do a lot of polling with our readers and ask them what their favorite sections of the Nat Geo Kids um, magazine was. Mm -hmm. And so out of that, I, I believe if I'm telling this correctly, I think the Almanac was born. And it's really a hodgepodge of stuff that we know kids love. Um, and, and the really cool thing about it is it's nonfiction. So it's all true. I, you know, there's some really cool wild facts in here about animals um, and their amazing adaptations. And it's it's stuff that, at least to me as the editor, and I know I'm an adult, so I'm not the target market, but I find it so fascinating. And if I didn't know that world-class fact checkers had vetted this information, I don't, I would have to look it up myself. And I sometimes do um, because it's just so crazy. Mm, absolutely. And so it's really an ongoing process, how you help to um, build this almanac year after year, apparently. Can you tell us what yeah. is new in this edition and what that process is like? Yeah, so over the course of the year, so the Almanac is a yearly a yearly book that we put out, um, as you mentioned, and, you know, over the course, course of the year, you know, we're, we're kind of saving information, you know, we, we read the news as well, and we're kind of pocketing away headlines and news stories that we think would be really cool um, to share with kids, and then when it comes up to Almanac, we go to that folder and we start extrapolating that information and we start combing through the almanac, having our fact checkers revisit every page, updating stats and facts. We update photographs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we like to feature things like um, like new species discoveries. That's a big one because we know kids will find that so interesting. And, you know, as you know, ready to wear, um, you know, National Geographic is really known for its photography. That's like one of the, mm -hmm. the of the brand. So for Natural we we like to showcase as many beautiful photos as absolutely possible. So we've jammed, we, these books are jam-packed with so many cool photographs. And we find that it actually helps with kids reading comprehension as well, because mm. they can you know, follow along and, and see photos of what we're talking about. Um, and it's, you know, as they're learning about their world, which is, you know, small when they're, when they're small, as they get you know, older and like they're learning more about the world, they just have this voracious appetite for learning about it. And they're like, mm, mm. and so what are your favorite photographs in there or types of photographs that really excite you? Sure. I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to show you, share this on the screen, but fair use. <laughs> <One of> the, 
<laughs> Fair <laughs> use. Here's the promotion. We're good. <laughs> One of my favorite photographs um, is actually of this new, I don't know if you can see that, but this new species of frog um, yeah. actually is see-through frog. So you can actually see its organs through its skin, which I think is so incredibly cool. Um, and, you know, as you can see, it's it's actually a very cute frog. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, some of the cool facts in here um, are, my, some of my favorites are about the animals. I I love learning about animals. I think they've got such wild adaptations. Yeah. Um, there's a fact in here about how flamingos have a special organ that helps them filter out uh, salt from salt water, mm -hmm. which, you know, because potable water and, you know, fresh water is an issue that's facing our global community right now. I thought it was really noteworthy that there's an animal that has this built in solution into their anatomy. That was so cool. And I can just tell how excited you are about the natural world, about life, about science. What what brought you into a life of science and education? Oh, um, well, I, I started off um, actually studying science in college. And then um, I wanted to be a science writer because I felt like um, a lot of the the things that scientists were studying were really, really cool, but I thought they needed some, sometimes they needed help, like kind of articulating some of these mm. ideas. So we lay people, <laughs> 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 they sometimes got caught up in their technical jargon. Um, and I, they didn't always even realize that they were speaking that way. Um, but I thought, you know, if I could help them share that information in a way that other people could understand it, then other people could get excited about it too. And I think the same is true with, you know, Nat Geo kids books. It's, it's taking that really cool information and packaging it up. So, you know, kids can understand it and then they can get really excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that Nat Geo has done. I mean, I remember being a kid and just being so excited every time something new from Nat Geo came out. Um, and so what do you see as being some of the greatest benefits for kids in learning about science, technology, all this STEAM uh, oh, wow. subjects? Oh, just like, a, a, you know, it's so good to exercise that part of the brain. I mean, I'm in a more creative field, but I, I mean, it's all creative, actually. I shouldn't say that. Um, but I think you know, it's, there are just so many tools that you, you learn when you're learning those subjects that just kind of carry over into all facets of your life. It's sort of this critical thinking. It's, it's this way of approaching the world where you're, you know, exploring an, a hypothesis and mm -hmm. you know, kind of getting curious about the world around you. And, you know, I don't think that's limited to, to STEM and STEAM, but, um, you know, I do think that, you know, especially getting girls into into those subjects is really important you know and, and nat geo kids where our aim is always to kind of bring the world to kids fingertips and kind of let them be the, those you know engage in that sort of armchair exploration and you know we we just want to show kids the the really amazing stuff that's out there hmm, there's so much amazing stuff out there you know and, um, you know, you talked about um, being a very creative person and that your creativity certainly shows through in the editing of this book. Um, but can you talk a little bit, if you would, about how the arts and, you know, doing art and creating art uh, helps, um, learn, helps kids with science and how learning science can be brought into the arts as well? Sure. I mean, I think if you, you know, go back to, you know, even, you know, early, um, you know, thinkers that we, you know, like amazing philosophers and stuff, a lot of them were into the sciences, but also the arts, um, you know, people like Leonardo da Vinci, like, I just, I think that, you know, being kind of well-rounded is, is wonderful. And I know that, you know, at Nacho Kids, having uh, you know, a background in both is really beneficial, like, you know, being kind of creative and artistic, um, but also being creative and, you know, scientific. That's, that's super helpful because we apply both of those um, skill sets to creating our books. 
having of a scientific background is super helpful, uh, you know, as we're editing and as we're putting information together, because we can kind of help pinpoint, you know, is this, is this, uh, you know, uh, new discovery? Like, is that something that we can articulate for kids? Is this something really noteworthy? Um, you know, having that background is super important. And as an editor, like I review the layouts for a book as well. So I'm looking at art and, you know, the, the photography in conjunction with the text. So that's, it's helpful to have both. Hmm. And another quality of well, so many Nat Geo books, and especially no, Nat Geo kids books, is how you use humor in in telling the story and in in, in teaching. And um, can you talk a little bit about how you go about using using this humor and what it can provide for for kids in breaking down barriers to science education? Sure. Um... Well, you know, we know that our readers love humor. We've got a whole Just Joking series that kids absolutely love. Um, you know, we find that humor is a great way to kind of engage kids with really cool content. So um, one thing that I think our brand does really, really well is kind of packaging up um, science and, and, you know, this kind of hard hitting, you know, nonfiction information in a way that's super digestible and really engaging for kids. And I kind of think of it as like, you know, when you're a parent and you kind of like want your kids to eat vegetables or something and they're they're being picky and you kind of sneak the like vegetables into like the brownies somehow. Um, <laughs> that's how I view like some of our products because kids have so much fun with these books. So even if you have a reluctant reader in your life, I, I, I would, challenge you even <laughs> to like to hand them a Nat Geo kids book and see what they think because you know it there's so much fascinating information in here so if they're interested in anything we it's our goal to try to get kids to want to read our books we want kids to go mom dad I really want to have that um and to share this really cool knowledge with them and get them thinking about you know space and about sharks and whales and dinosaurs and you know they they just have these like kids are so cool i i have a daughter myself and like you just see like the 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 rapid development and it's just so interesting it's so cool to watch mm -hmm. and uh your and i i love your uh 2024 almanac challenge it yeah. inspired this elephant in a spacesuit behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where that came from. That's, that's where that came from. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So what's the 2024 Almanac Challenge and how do kids participate in it? Yeah. So every year we've got an Almanac Challenge where we, you know, want kids to engage with, with us and our brand and um, to, to submit their their creation through this contest. So you can go, so kids can go to um, natchgeokids.com slash almanac, and they can get the rules for this year's challenge there. But basically we wanted to highlight the work of one of our explorers, um, Dominique Gonzalez. She's from Mozambique and she grew up seeing elephants and she was really fascinated by them and she started to study them. And then she realized that they needed her help um, in, in protecting them because some of them were being poached, um, you know, for their ivory. Mm -hmm. And um, we just really wanted to highlight her work. We wanted to highlight more information about elephants. They have complex social lives, actually. Oh. Um, and scientists have recently discovered that the elephants actually express emotion, um, which is really cool. I think we think of that as being yeah. like a human trait and characteristic, um, you know, and that, is, you know, some animals like dogs, for example, you know, we know that they, they have emotions, but we, we don't think of them as being like this wide range per se. Um, but, but more research is coming out that elephants actually may experience a, a wider array of emotion and we previously the thought, and they may actually experience a very, very deep, uh, very deep feelings about things. We know they mourn their young, for example. So if, you know, kids want to participate in this challenge, they can go to natgeokids.com slash almanac. Um, and then the challenge is to create uh, a, not a real, but a mock social media page for an elephant. Like what would the elephant say? What would their, um, 
what would be like top of mind for an elephant? What's their favorite color? What's their favorite food? So if you go to natgeokids.com slash almanac, you'll see a template there. It's again, not to create a real so social media page. Um, we do want to get kids away from the screen uh, this summer. And so they can do that by reading the, the Nat Geo Kids Almanac, but they can get a template. They can make their own template if they don't want to use ours. Um, and then, you know, they can add how to they can have a profile photo of the elephant, they can name the elephant, and then um, they can submit their entry. And uh, our favorite one will be featured in the uh, Nat Geo Kids 2025 Almanac. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Ariane. It was fabulous talking with you. Thank you so much. Nice. And that was Ariane Su Chu, Senior Editor at Nat Geo Kids Book. Check out their new work, Almanac 2024. It's awesome. First up, let's talk about science. Science! science! From exploring the mysteries of the universe to discovering the secrets of the natural world, science is all about understanding the cosmos around us. Science allows learners of all ages to experience the thrill of scientific discovery and the real-world problem-solving firsthand. Next up is technology. From controlling fire to self-driving cars, technology has always changed the way we live, work, and play. Learning how to code, design new systems, and rethink how technologies can make life better for people Students develop skills needed to thrive in a tech-driven world. Now let's talk about engineering. From building bridges to designing spacecraft, engineering is all about using science and technology to solve problems and make our world a better place. With STEAM education, learners get to experience the excitement of engineering firsthand by working on real-world projects and collaborating with peers. Students learn how to think critically and creatively as they design solutions to complex challenges. But wait, there's more! From painting and sculpture to music and dance, the arts can reach people in ways other forms of teaching might not. The place the thing wherein I'll catch the education of the king. STEAM education encourages learners to explore their artistic side in new and exciting ways. Plus, having more people who know science in the film industry is seriously going to help relieve the headaches which inevitably result from bad science in movies. I mean, a refurbished space shuttle being used to, to deflect an Earth-threatening asteroid. Seriously? <sighs> Last but not least, we complete the equation with mathematics. From crunching numbers to solving equations, math is all about using logic and reasoning to understand the world around us. With STEAM education, learners get to experience the beauty and the power of math in entirely new ways. By exploring real-world applications of mathematics and pattern recognition, Students develop a deep understanding of mathematical concepts and learn how to use these tools to solve problems in their everyday lives. So, there you have it. STEAM education is an exciting and innovative approach to learning that integrates science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in a way that's engaging and fun for learners of all ages. By encouraging creativity and critical thinking, STEAM education provides numerous benefits for learners as well as for science and society as a whole. So what are you waiting for? It's time to jump aboard the STEAM train. All aboard, Excelsior. Join us next week on the Cosmic Companion for our half season finale. We're gonna be looking at the greatest mysteries of the universe. You'll be joined by acclaimed physicist and author Lawrence Krauss, author of The Physics of Star Trek and The Edge of Knowledge. 
talking about dark matter, dark energy, the Big Bang, the nature of time, and a whole lot more. This is going to be our final episode of the show before summer break, so make sure to join us starting on the 8th of July. If you enjoyed this week's installment of The Cosmic Companion, please check out our other episodes at thecosmiccompanion.com, .net, .tv, share, tell a friend, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm talking about right now. Clear skies. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. If it be true that good wine needs no bush, tis true that a good play needs no epilogue. Just quit it with the post-credits already. Seriously, you're not Marvel.